Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Research, Recovery, and Reskill webinar. I'm Susan Vernon Devlin, Manager of Communications and Marketing at Rosen College of Hospitality Management. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. First, a bit of housekeeping. Attendees, we will not use the chat feature or the raise your hand feature for the webinar. We will only use the question and answer feature. Please place all questions and comments there. We will respond to your questions at the end of the presentation. However, feel free to type into the question and answer feature as we go along so you don't forget what you wanna ask. If your question is the same or similar to another question that is asked at the end of the presentation, we may skip it and only respond once. If we don't get to a particular question during the webinar, rest assured, we will email you and try and contact you to answer your question after the webinar. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Yu Cheng Wang, Dean of Rosen College of Hospitality Management, to get the webinar started and introduce our presenter. Dr. Wang? Thank you, Susan, for your introduction. Uh, good morning, all, and greetings from UCF Rosen College. Uh, today is June the 12th, uh, Wednesday, 2020, and thank you all for joining us today for the third in a series of webinars offered by UCF Rosen College of Hostile and Management. These webinars are designed to help UCF graduates uh, recharge for the changes we are anticipating as the hospitality and tourism industry emerges from the effects of the COVID-19 virus. And based on demand, uh, we are opening this a little bit uh, up to other important stakeholders. So I understand you know, today we also have some international participants. Again, my name is Dr. Yu Chen Wang and I'm Dean of UC Rosen College of Hospitality Management. All our alumni know that our mission at UC Rosen College is to develop the future leaders of the hospitality industry. And um, obviously that does not stop after you graduate. We want, to, we want you to know that you know, as part of the UCF family and the leaders in the industry, we are a resource for each of you um, as you develop in your careers, especially now as our industry faces so many challenges. So with that, I would like to invite my colleague, Dr. Fevseo Kumas, to take over the Rosen College Research Recovery and rescale webinar number three, focusing on a very important uh, uh, issue uh, that is um, uh, related to resilience. So, Fafsi, please take over. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, good afternoon. I know many of our colleagues uh, are joining us today from all around the world. That's why I'm saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining. And uh, with your permission, I would like to start one second. Okay. Um, I want to thank first uh, our colleagues, Susan Boucher, Susan Vernon Devlin, and Daniela Orchid, and as well as our UCF uh, tech team for organizing this webinar and also their help with my presentation. And I also want to help uh, thank my students, uh, undergraduate, graduate students and also my PhD students with their comments and feedback. And many thanks to our industry friends and faculty members, they share their feedback as well when I talk to them about how we can prepare such a workshop webinar. And before I start, I want to thank, especially our industry friends from ETP, uh, Entertainment Technology Partners, Dave John, Ormila, and others for their feedback as well, their help. And finally, I want to thank our uh, colleagues, uh, workers in the hospitality industry all around the world since the COVID-19 uh, started. Their efforts are uh, beyond belief. We appreciate uh, how they have been fighting and helping everyone. First of all, I want to say this is not a research presentation. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Robertico Cruz and Dr. Manuela Rivera presented a few uh, webinars. They presented their research findings, and this is not, mine is not a research presentation. And I must admit, I'm not going to present a magic formula that will solve all your problems during these difficult times. 
and then I have used materials from different sources uh, and then used some uh, figures, uh, some cartoons, uh, photos. Uh, so that's why I'm happy to share my references when needed. Uh, finally, this is, uh, there will be a, a, a homework at the end. Get a pen and paper, I will ask questions and then later you need to send me your answers. So it will be an engaged uh, webinar. All right. Um, this is our, on the screen, uh, we have Rosen College picture. And I was at Rosen College uh, about 10 days ago. I felt very sad because it was empty and I re also realized how much I missed Rosen College such a wonderful place, the best uh, hospitality college globally. And then uh, thought how lucky we are to have such a wonderful uh, college and colleagues and students. Uh, and then I wish uh, we were in uh, the Harden Auditorium at Rosen College and I will be standing and then you will be raising your hand, laughing, uh, joking, even playing with your cell phone. So I don't know how much you see the screen, but uh, on the right hand side, Mr. Rosen, uh, Harris Rosen is standing and talking to our students. I would like to say we have a lot to learn from Ro uh, Mr. Rosen. He's a great example of how he has survived during difficult times from his early childhood to his uh, career and then losing his job and starting roads and hotels. And even in recent years, uh, what a tragedy, he lost his son, uh, one of his uh, sons to cancer, but how he has responded back by donating money for cancer research. And again, some of our students and faculty members may not know uh, Rosen College history. Our founding dean, APSM, can tell you there were only five faculty and 50 students, 60 students, at within at UCF at one point, they also, uh, they also thought about closing uh, the hospitality department. But what happened now, uh, after 10, 15 years, uh, 20 years, we have one of the best colleges uh, globally, best hospitality colleges globally. What I want to say here is Rosen College is an example of resilience and showing you can survive. And in 2007, 8, 9, I was the founding chair uh, of the hospitality services department. At that time, we had the uh, financial crisis and with limited resources, limited faculty members, we were able to teach first 1,500 students, then 2,000 and went up to 3,000 students. Another example of uh, this island from Rosen College. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the outline of my uh, presentation. I will not go over line by line, but uh, just an idea what we will be covering today. Okay. When I teach, my students may remember uh, or taking my online courses, there is a theory we call complexity theory and it says little things may make a huge impact globally. And then we, we call it butterfly effect. Uh, a butterfly in Brazil uh, flying and its wing, its wings creating a hurricane in the United States. And at one time, when I explained this, one of my students said, Professor, sorry, but what a dumb story. How is that possible? I tried to explain by giving different examples, but I couldn't convince him. Unfortunately, the COVID pandemic is a, is a good example of the complexity theory, how a virus can affect the whole world. And then we have this. In some cases, we have a disaster, it happens overnight, and then we try to recover. But during this COVID-19, what's happening is since uh, January, or even from December, what's happening that uh, globally, uh, the, the whole hospitality, tourism industry, and many industries are dramatically affected. And then it is not still over yet, and we are still struggling, okay? Many industries are, uh, are, have been affected and then millions of people have lost their jobs and this is indeed a difficult time for all of us. Yet, when we look at uh, social media and there are a lot of nice stories, uh, accomplishments and happiness, which is absolutely fine, which is good. But in reality, uh, if we ask people, uh, 
say, tell me about your, your past, what happened to you? There are many uh, tragedies, many challenges. Since you are in your homes, offices, let's do a test, all right? Uh, I want to raise your hand uh, or stand up. Um, how many of you, if you have experienced a hurricane, raise your hand, a tsunami, an earthquake, a pandemic, okay? face a major health challenge, okay? experience a death in family among friends, lost your job, discriminated, failed, face financial challenges, all right? So tell me how many of you, you may not tell, but in question and answer you will tell, I'm sure 90, more than 90, 95% have experienced uh, tragedies, challenges in our lives. So we need to learn with challenges and survive in, uh, with challenges. What is happening is we have this, uh, a lot of, um, we have this, a lot of happiness, which is absolutely fine in our social media, but also in our lives, uh, many things are happening and then we are struggling. So when we think about our past, there are challenges. When we think about our future, there will be challenges uh, for us. We need to be ready for such challenges. It's always nice to talk about generations. Uh, we have traditional seniors, baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Z. And then we have now Gen Alpha, those who were, are born after 2010. I'm not going to cover Gen Alpha, but I want to talk more about Gen Y and Gen Z. What is interesting, ladies and gentlemen, about Gen Y and Gen Z, they value their own community, own friends, and they are often cynical and they mistrust authorities and they focus on learning and growth. And then for them, success is all about career growth and fast, speedy growth. And then they want to be rewarded for learning and knowledge. And then also their work-life balance is really important. They want to enjoy their life. And what is interesting because of the COVID, all these things have been dramatically affected. Their career growth affected, their education system affected, and their future is affected and work-life affected. Everything has been affected. So in coming years, we will see a lot of uh, research studies on how uh, Gen, Gen Y, Gen Z, and Gen Alpha are affected by this COVID and also its implications. While preparing this webinar, I came across many articles. One was very interesting. It says Americans are among the most stressed people in the world. Uh, so basically what I see here, uh, yes, before the COVID-19, uh, we were uh, stressed, many Americans, they couldn't sleep, they had major concerns, uh, health issues and, and so forth. But during the COVID, since it started, what we see is uh, a family, these are the main uh, sources of a reason, uh, stresses for Americans. A family member getting coronavirus, government response to coronavirus, disrupted routines, getting coronavirus by themselves, and basic needs and self-isolation. So these are the areas that Americans are stressed with uh, since the COVID started. I'm sure uh, you can look at yourself and whether uh, how true this is or in your case, whether you can say the same thing. Then we, we already have a stressful life, but what is resilience? Uh, what we see resilience is mitigating the effects of challenges, difficulties, and then also ability to bounce back, not staying the same, uh, respond back, and then turning challenges into opportunities. And resilience is not just standing there and waiting and hiding. Resilience is all about responding back and minimize the effects and turning opportunities, uh, turning challenges into opportunities. The question here we have, why do we need to be resilient? That's, that's a very uh, interesting question for us. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, why we need to be resilient? because we care for ourselves. We want to be proud of ourselves. We want to show our family members that we, we are resilient. And our society, we want to give back. That's the reason that we need to be resilient. I like this statement by Winston Churchill. 
success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that count. So what we say, stay, keep going, move forward. That is the statement, stay the course, stay the course, okay? And we often hear, this is a funny uh, cartoon drawing figure. What we like in our lives, we have a plan and everything is smooth. We will have our a luxury car or bike. We will sail, we will move forward and we will achieve our goals and objectives and be happy and rich, successful, whatever. But in reality, you have ups and downs. And then while hoping to have a nice smooth road, you face challenges, you face rocks, and then you have to swim, you have to create your own tools to be able to achieve your goals. And then whatever you intended in, in reality, you may not be able to achieve as well. This is the reality for all of us. So what is important, ladies and gentlemen, for us is to check our self-awareness. When sometimes we look at the mirror, we may see ourselves like a very successful lion, lioness, or we may feel like when we face challenges, we may say, my God, you know, I am not successful, I'm not strong, then, then you may lose your self-confidence. Let's do, uh, do some self-awareness issues here. Our choice, what do I choose to be during COVID-19? So I will be asking all of you to respond one by one, okay? So fear zone, zone one, fear zone, panic buy, uh, what, do we, what did we buy? Toilet papers, all right? And food, what did I buy? I went to the store, bought uh, some olives and feta cheese for my breakfast. And getting mad, fear, angry, blame others, read a lot about COVID. And even some of us tried to find the solution, even we were not doctors but like this will help, that will help. And then we shared messages with everyone. That was the, that is the, the first fear zone. And are you still in this, this fear zone, the first one? Let's see. The second one is the learning zone. Accept the situation, it's not going away. Uh, assess emotions, how do we feel? Sometimes family members, friends may be stressed. It's better for us to say, okay, let's calm down. Let's be positive, okay? smile, let's find solutions, and then encourage everyone and look for opportunities. Yes, this is the challenge, what can I do? Staying at home is, is, is not the solution, what can I do at home? And start exercising. Uh, during the COVID, I have seen a lot of uh, photos on social media, cooking their food, I cook this, I'm experimenting this, this looks good, but also our bellies uh, are a little bit bigger than before, so COVID has not helped us in terms of healthy eating. So it's time for us perhaps to think about uh, healthy eating, start exercising, and then start thinking sensibly. This is the second zone. And then we have the third zone, uh, thinking what growth zone, positive, but still cautious because the COVID is not over. And then its effects on all industries uh, is not over. Adapting to new changes, focus on uh, what is important, present and future, and then how we can uh, build teams, how we can work, how, how we can appreciate others, and then also networking, uh, helping others. Look at your networking skills and so forth. So what is important here, we have three zones, and then now you have a pen and paper, Think about yourself, which zone are you? It is possible that you may be moving from zone one to two or two to one, or you are already in zone three, but sometimes you're going back to zone two. But it's for us to think about how I can be always in, in learning zone and growth zone. How I can team, uh, build a team, how I can think about present and future, how I can uh, build skills and knowledge and so forth. So please write down which zone are you, and then in Q&A session, you can share with me, okay? When we talk about resilience, uh, I have read a lot. There are 
many research studies and based on my research there are eight areas that we need to focus on in terms of uh, resilience one is basically a purpose everyone needs to have a purpose even during difficult times perhaps the purpose having a purpose during challenging times is more important than anything because you keep reminding yourself what is my purpose in life physical resilience mental financial and adaptability growth and networking and social environment a group so ladies and gentlemen what is purpose where you want to be what is your vision in the long term what is your purpose in life why you exist you need to think about it and then develop specific goals for all for yourself uh, we will get into that uh, developing smart goals but think about uh, your purpose in life your vision and then you develop goals specifically and then focus on values values are really important they help you make decisions what is really key for you what shapes uh, your decisions and how they help and then physical exercise and exercise and exercise uh, this is key when i say exercise it doesn't mean you need to run walk you can do things at home but being physically active is key and eating healthy whatever food in your culture in your house but eat healthy and and in portion and then sleeping well yes it's stressful it's not easy for all of us but if we sleep well it helps dramatically and some of our colleagues en uh, enjoy alcohol they are social drinker drinkers but also during these difficult times as much as possible stay away from alcohol and then drugs what we know that exercise uh, improves your sleep exercise boosts your mood and exercise boosts uh, your self confidence and then also exercise is good for your brain right so when we exercise it helps everything there is a connection with with our body and brain and when we exercise it sends good signals positive signals and fix many things mentally just emotions positive attitude is the key smiling humorous and having a mental positive mental attitude and these will help in stress management it's all about managing stress not being reactive being proactive taking a deep breath and thinking about how you can survive again physical exercise healthy eating will help your mental stage as well when you are mentally stable positive happy that will have help your physical uh, resilience too financial uh, unfortunately uh, what we hear about 70% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck and many of our students have uh, student debts but what is interesting difficult and important during these times we need to sit down and track all our expenses all, all our income and have a budget and monitor and then decide what is what are my needs and then what are my wants so manage your uh, money wisely and then if possible when possible save and then if possible you need to start thinking about investment not just during difficult times but all the time i think financial uh, resilience is key for many of our students so we need to emphasize this here adaptability we say strong people strong individuals or creatures will not survive only those who can adapt and manage change will survive so during these difficult times adaptability is key and then managing change is, is really instrumental and also making decisive decisions you have all the information you have all the options but you are stuck you cannot make a decision so this is really key for all of us to make decisions and decisive decisions it's also important to follow up your decisions and implement some of us make decisions and then follow one week two weeks and then they give up so it's time for us to to stick with our decisions and don't give up and implement and perhaps one of the most important things for us during uh, this di these difficult times challenging times growth your education formal education we should not give up our formal education but focus on what, where i can 
continue to find and enroll into a new education, a new degree, a new master's degree, a new certificate, and whatever skills you have, then focus on your skills, sharpen them, improve them, and then think about what skills you may add to your portfolio, and that will solve problems. And then that will make you more employable than before. And also, what we are teaching at Rosen College, hospitality management, we are teaching you, giving you a lot of transferable skills. And you are lucky, you can transfer, use all these skills in different fields, different industries. It's absolutely fine if you can consider a new career. And then we historically, we know, ladies and gentlemen, during difficult times, many people start their businesses and uh, they become entrepreneurs. So you may start thinking like, yes, what can I do? I can start a business. Sometimes you don't need to spend so much money, so much time. You can start a business from home or it may be a service, okay? So networking, how many of you, has, uh, of you have now updated your CV? So it's time to update, sharpen our CVs. And then also uh, focus on your LinkedIn account or social media account for professional sites. Uh, make sure it's, it's professional, it's providing all the information, and, and then it's, I have been receiving many uh, requests to, to become a LinkedIn friends with me, join me, and then asking me advice for the last two months, which is admirable. And also I have received emails saying, professor, I want to talk to you about this opportunity, that opportunity. So it's time to network and send a thank you note to those people who have helped you or you work together, not when you need them, but before you need them. Sometimes I get an email from uh, someone saying, oh, professor, 10 years ago we met, do you remember me? Yes, I remember you. I need a reference letter from you. And I still write the reference letter, but if that person continued connecting with me, sending me messages and updating me, it's nicer, not just when they need me. So just we need to continue networking and meeting new people and who are the key players in the industry, how I can connect with them, and then how I can, I can connect with their companies. So just be, be ready. Building your support network, uh, I may say your family members, your close friends, your mentors, uh, your professors, think about who can help you, who have helped you connect with them and just be in touch and ask for advice. And moving to the next, uh, I, I like this statement here it says, uh, President Obama said, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I always do that. And, and then also, if you have a weakness, say, I, am, I need your help here. Can you help me? So admit if you need help, if you are not strong, and then allow people to help you. But you have to trust as well when you ask for help. Okay? This has worked for me a lot. Whenever I am not feeling comfortable in one area, I need help, I approach, and it, and it I have found many good friends through this, uh, this strategy. And also it's my pleasure to help uh, those students and also junior faculty, industry friends. One of the important things uh, during difficult times, ladies and gentlemen, social support. According to research studies, during difficult times, people tend to focus more on Maslow hierarchies uh, needs, the, the lower level of needs, basically basic needs, food, shelter, sleep. But research studies suggest that when people focus on higher needs, socializing, helping, uh, giving back, creating new things, that these activities help them recover, build resilience more. Ladies and gentlemen, what is interesting, what I want to say here, during these difficult times, we need to give back, we need to volunteer, we need to help, we need to share, right? So I have covered eight areas of resilience. Uh, they are equally important. And then one positive change in one area will equally uh, have good waves in other areas with help, will help. So what we need to do, look at each area and then say what I can do in this area, this area, this area, and start working on it. What happens is when I meet my, uh, with my students, even my daughters, uh, when I say you need to do this, 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 and the answer is I can't do it. 
it's not easy. So we all have these hurdles. The stories we tell each other, I cannot do it, I cannot do it. Why not we say, I can do it, right? And also it's easy to say than, than hard to do, but at least you can start. If you never try, if you don't try, you will never know. It's for us to start trying new things. And then I want to move here, what is important, what is key. What we can do is we can develop smart goals. And what, what we mean by smart goals is they are specific, they are measurable, they are acceptable, they are realistic, and then they are timely, time bound. Let's think about some small steps, right? Uh, all of us and have your pen and paper and write down. Uh, we will work on these together. Okay, write down three things which you are grateful, right? I'm giving you a couple of seconds. Three things you are grateful in life. If you ask me what I'm grateful, I will easily say, I have a wonderful family, two wonderful daughters. I have a great job. I'm grateful. I'm healthy. We are healthy. Think about your purpose in life. My purpose 10 years ago was 15 years ago was to become a professor, a leading professor in strategic management. Now my purpose is to help uh, future leaders in our industry and start exercising. I don't mean you need to run, swim, heavy exercise, but at least start with little, even 15 minute walk. Practice healthy eating okay, at least two days a week and register a training education work, uh, program. All right, let's see. Uh, write down one or two things under each. And then let's move to the next steps, small steps. Update your, update your LinkedIn profile or any other profession profiles. Send a thank you note to someone who has helped you or will help you, your mentor, your colleague, a text message. And then connect with at least two new individuals in your field that who may help you, who may give you advice or connect you with others. Find a volunteering opportunity. And then your support group. You, or you may already have a support group. If not, form your support group. If you don't have anyone, you can reach one of Rosen College professors, including myself. We are happy to help you here. So you have a homework now, all right? What I need you to do, write down those things and then agree that I will be doing this, 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 at least three, four things. And then email it to one of your colleagues. If you don't want to email it to anyone, you can email it to me, your homework, so you will get a grade. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, closing, uh, think about your competencies. Uh, if you are a Rosen College student, we train you, prepare you well, and you have many transferable skills, competencies, knowledge. I am sure this crisis is, will be over soon and you will find good jobs, better jobs. Just believe in yourself. Never forget your values especially, and also your purpose in life. Develop smart goals, be specific, and it's all about developing small behavioral changes, small steps, and then more behavioral changes and, and so forth. So your support network is important. Make sure you invest in your support network, your colleagues, your mentors, your friends. Make sure you help them and also ask for help. Basically, resilience is, is built over time. You cannot solve all your problems immediately. What I want to say is uh, think about your previous challenges, failures, and difficulties. Basically, personally, I have learned the most from my challenges, from the challenges I face, from my failures. All those make me stronger. And uh, just think about your role model in life, how she, he would have done, responded, and keep moving, stay in the course. Uh, one more thing, ladies and gentlemen, we, we always hear stories from our mentors, elders, and everyone, okay? Like when I was young, when I faced this, I I've uh, experienced this, 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 right? Good. So what stories will you be telling your kids, grandkids, and others 10 years, 20 years time? During the COVID, I accomplished this. After the COVID-19, I accomplished this, this, this. Okay, be strong, keep going.
final thoughts, what I would like to say, as uh, Yu Cheng mentioned, we are the educational arm of the hospitality industry. We are here to help uh, our alumni, our students, the industry, everyone. If, if you need similar webinars, courses, I personally volunteer to deliver similar, the same webinar to your organization, your employees, your colleagues. And then we are happy to develop specific uh, webinars, workshops to help our alumni, our students, and our industry partners during these difficult times. Please, you are welcome to reach Rosen College, uh, also myself. Uh, I, we are happy to help. And I want to thank everyone for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, I hope you will get something, at least one or two things. And then finally, don't forget your homeworks. Uh, I will be waiting for your homeworks. And there are some additional resilience resources from UCF, uh, counseling uh, services, UCF Cares, Night, Helping Knights Pantry, UCF alumni, and also Rosen College uh, degree programs and certificate programs. Please uh, take advantage. And also UCF Continuing Educa Education offers free certificate programs. Thank you again. I will be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Dr. Alchemus. Um, our first question, I will answer myself. Um, we're, someone asked, are we going to be able to see the questions again by chance so we can answer them? Yes, you will be able to see them again because we record the webinars and they will be on UCF Rosen Hospitality's YouTube channel and also on the web page where you registered for this webinar. So now let's get to some questions for Dr. Akimus. Um, from Seden, he says, thank you for bringing some important aspects of resilience. However, don't you think we need to start some conversation about digital okay. well-being, um, considering everything has gone online? Do you think we need to have a conversation about digital well-being, Dr. Akimus? <laughs> Good question, Seden. I think we sometimes need to have digital detox, okay? We spend far too much time uh, on, on social media online. Uh, social well, uh, media well-being is definitely important. We need to, first of all, know how to treat others, how to write uh, comments on social media to make, to not, do not offend others uh, on social media and also uh, do not spend much time on, 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 on the internet on, online, I would say. That's a good point, definitely. Okay, thank you, Dr. Alchemist. From Susan, we have a question. Um, because employers may not be hiring now, how will employers view my time while furloughed? Will volunteer activities be valued? How do you put that in a resume? Uh, I have been in touch with many industry colleagues, managers, executives. I don't think anyone will see it as a negative thing uh, as long as you justify and then you can get a strong recommendation letter from your previous uh, employer saying these were the reasons he she is an excellent employee we would like to hire her back and then one other advice from me would be what have you done do for the last three months six months what new skill set you have added to your CV how you improved your existing knowledge and skills. As long as you prove that employers will be happy to hire uh, those employees, okay? Thank you, Dr. Agnes. And there are also, sorry for interrupting, there are also thousands, millions of uh, employees in the same situation, okay? Yes, there are. Um, we have a question. Do you have suggestions on how to shift into another segment of the industry if the area in which you work now does not seem to be recovering? Absolutely, yes. As I mentioned, even outside the hospitality industry, they can focus on. Uh, they have the skill set. We train many of our students with many different competencies. They can transfer those skills. As long as they have a job, they are happy. Uh, they should definitely consider other sectors within the hospitality and tourism or even outside hospitality and tourism. We believe hospitality is everywhere, from your home to any business. We practice hospitality. We have a question from Abraham. He says, 
Can you highlight the importance of resilience? Why shouldn't we just give up and accept it as God-given? Wow. <laughs> as far as I know, God doesn't say give up, all right? God says, keep going, keep improving, keep serving. And if you want to be a proud person, uh, that you are proud of yourself and help others, you keep uh, fighting, improving your skills, and keep moving, and, uh, and then being, uh, becoming a better person. That's my advice. Okay. Please remember to continue to put your questions in the, the question and answer section. Um, I have a question personally uh, about resilience. In, in these times, um, you went through the steps of, you know, where we may be in section one, two, or three or four. Um, can we possibly be in all those sections at one time? Or is that not helping us move forward into resilience? It is possible that you may be in zone one an hour, in zone two the next hour, and then later you, you will be in zone three. But I would look at most of the time, where are you? Okay. So are you in zone two most of the time? Are you in zone three most of the time? And then also push yourself. Some of us are, uh, are always positive, keep pushing, pushing, pushing. We have a choice to be uh, optimistic and say, I will do this, I will do this, I will move here, I will accomplish this, help others. Or we have a choice being like very negative, oh, not, never will happen, I cannot solve this problem. I don't think that will help anyone, to be honest. Okay. And then one other advice, Susan, is if we see colleagues, friends really struggling emotionally, financially, physically, and everything, Perhaps it's time for us to step in and, and by being very careful saying, let's do this together. Can I help you? I have many friends within Orlando or globally. I check on them and talk to them. Rather than talking about their problems, I talk about different things just to take attention, their attention to different things. And then I have colleagues, friends, they call me, they text me, and we talk about different things. So it's good to connect and then move away from current issues, at least for a while, and then have some discussions about what to do, thinking about present and future, okay? Um, you, you mentioned briefly before about um, beefing up your LinkedIn profile and your CV. How often should someone do that, you know, especially now? Basically, what I noticed, I haven't updated my LinkedIn account for ages, and then also UCF Rosen College website, so I will definitely be doing that very soon. But for young, uh, energetic uh, individuals, uh, especially if they are in, in the job market or finding a better job, they should do it every three months to uh, six months. And then we have a very competent professors at Rosen College, uh, they give professional advice on CV building, polishing, and LinkedIn uh, profiles. So I'm sure Rosen College faculty members can help. Okay, but I will say, whatever you have uh, something, a new skill, new accomplishment, put there on your LinkedIn or CV professionally, and then every six months, three to six months, go back and update everything. Okay, we have time for one last question. This question comes from Andrew. When faced with job loss in an upper management position, what are your thoughts on having to seek positions that would be considered a demotion or downward move during normal times? I think we have two options here, okay? Option one is I have this skill set, I have accomplished this, I work in these positions, and I don't accept anything below that. And then you keep waiting and waiting and until you find that position. Option two will be, these are unprecedented times. Uh, we never experienced something like this. I will take any job, the emotion is fine, as long as I have a job, and then I will prove myself, I will get a promotion immediately, even a better one, and so forth. Right, so I will go for option two rather than, I mean, unemployment is not a profession, uh, staying at home. It's better to find a job 
that you like you and then the company has potential and and then you i'm sure with the skill set personality promotion will come after okay. thank you very much dr alchemist that is all the time we have for today for our research recovery and rescale webinar we will have another research recovery and rescale webinar in two weeks with dr diego bufkin he will be speaking on leadership communication and human resources strategies in times of crisis so please join us on june the 26th at 11 a.m for that webinar thank you all for joining us and have a great day wherever you are.